and today I'm going to detail the functional and nearly symbiotic relationship between the critical coenzyme nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD, and the mitochondria-boosting supernutrient pyroloquinoline quinone, or PQQ, and specifically why PQQ should be an essential daily component to your NAD maintenance. Now, while those of you who regularly follow me know that I often talk about PQQ and NAD individually, I've never really explained for you how they interact and why each very much needs the other. Both PQQ and NAD can be obtained from food, with micro amounts of PQQ being present in every fruit and vegetable, and NAD being a byproduct of regularly ingesting the essential amino acid tryptophan, which is of course found primarily in meat and dairy products. Pyruvate is the end product of glycolysis, the first metabolic step in the extraction of dietary energy for cellular metabolism. However, if your cells lack mitochondria, are poorly oxygenated, or the demand for energy rapidly exceeds ATP production, as it does during intense exercise, pyruvate can be fermented into lactate by the metabolic enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. And this is where you can see the first intersection of PQQ and NAD, because PQQ, in the presence of NAD, binds to lactate dehydrogenase, thereby inhibiting the formation of lactate from pyruvate, leading to less lactate accumulation, more ATP production, and enhanced cellular energy overall. And beyond binding to lactate dehydrogenase, the specific mechanism behind PQQ's conversion of lactate to pyruvate is PQQ's oxidation of NAD into the far more active NAD+. PQQ's antioxidant capacity is far higher than NAD's. Also, it's very well known by now that PQQ initiates and maintains mitochondrial biogenesis, which is the creation of new mitochondria, the primary energy furnaces inside every one of our cells, along with the restoration of any aging and or damaged mitochondria. Increasing concentrations of pyruvate also enhance mitochondrial biogenesis, so PQQ's binding to lactate dehydrogenase and resulting facilitation of pyruvate production is definitely one part of how PQQ generates new mitochondria. And here is yet another critical area where you could see the interplay between NAD and PQQ, because as PQQ generates new mitochondria, NAD is literally the fuel for the metabolic proteins, known as sirtuins, that constantly repair DNA, telomeres, and mitochondria. While well, PQQ is again found in micro amounts in all natural foods, it's best to also take a daily PQQ supplement to ensure you're getting a sufficient daily dose. And a common dose for PQQ that you will likely encounter is 20 milligrams. You will also find PQQ sometimes packaged with either CoQ10 or even CoQ10's active form ubiquinol, which both serve as ATP elevating energy sources for the mitochondria. The best and easiest way to replenish and maintain NAD is through regularly taking NAD's direct precursor, niacin, or vitamin B3, and ideally the original flushing form of niacin, also known as nicotinic acid. But you can also generate NAD through regularly consuming the essential amino acid tryptophan, and if you're going to build NAD through taking tryptophan, then you would also need to take either a full B complex, or at the least some supplemental vitamin B6, which is the specific nutrient necessary for building NAD from tryptophan. So I hope you now understand the almost symbiotic relationship between PQQ and NAD, why you should maintain both every day, especially if you're older, and also how easy it is to do that. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.